Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, Ridley Scott's Alien is unquestionably one of the greatest and most iconic sci-fi films, and say it with me kids, of all time! And while it's inarguably best defined by both Sigourney Weaver's gutsy heroine Ellen Ripley and the bloodthirsty xenomorph, it would be totally remiss to ignore that the focal spaceship, the Nostromo, plays an important part. Arriving in an age where the overwhelming majority of sci-fi ships were impossibly sleek and gorgeous, this one was more ramshackle, nuts and bolt, that kind of gritty vehicle that we all wanted to see. It's powerful for sure, but lacking the finesse and stopping power of its heroic contemporaries. And it's quite fitting, of course, given that the Nostromo was a commercial towing vehicle more comparable to a delivery truck than a battleship, and yet one that served as the stage for one of the most unforgettable showdowns in sci-fi history. So let's give this big old bucket of bolts and rust some love today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 secrets behind Alien's Nostromo ship you didn't know. Number 10. It's 334 meters long and weighs 60,000 metric tons. Though the dimensions of the Nostromo aren't mentioned in Alien itself, reference materials tell us that the vessel measures in at a mighty 334 meters in length, 215 meters wide, and 98 meters high. Though its stature is nevertheless dwarfed by some of sci-fi fiction's most iconic vessels, like Star Trek The Next Generation's Enterprise-D, for example, which is a staggering 642.5 meters long and 145 meters high, but it still weighs a hefty 60,000 metric tons minus cargo, due to three decks, four holds, various stores and engines, and also its onboard escape pod, the Narcissus. Again, it's a decidedly more compact vessel than some of its iconic genre brethren, though it's also important to remember that the Nostromo is a commercial hauler capable of tugging gigantic vessels containing at least 20 million tons of cargo. Number 9. The design was influenced by both World War II and Star Wars. According to the production team, the Nostromo's design and construction were influenced by two major things, World War II and Star Wars. The Nostromo's tight, labyrinthine corridors were intended to invoke the feeling of a World War II submarine, with the set designers even dressing much of the ship's interiors with decommissioned aircraft parts from a nearby RAF base. The crew chairs on the bridge were literally taken from a fighter aircraft, and much of the med bay was comprised out of actual, genuine military medical equipment. This aesthetic style also transpired through to its more smaller production models of the Nostromo, with the crew using World War II model kits from battleships, tanks, and bombers to create the more articulate surface details. And then there's the Star Wars influence. The release mechanism, which attaches the Nostromo to whatever vessel it's hauling, incorporated bits from an R2-D2 model kit and also TIE fighter parts were used to accentuate the underside of the attached ore refinery. Pretty cool, right? Number 8. It was built in 2101 as an interstellar cruiser. Though the events of Alien and the Nostromo's subsequent destruction take place in the future of 2122, the ship was actually built way back in 2101. More to the point, the Nostromo didn't start out life as a commercial towing vehicle at all, but rather was constructed as an interstellar cruiser, a Lockmart CM88B Bison to be precise. However, in 2116, the ship was refitted as a towing vessel and soon thereafter began carrying out commercial haulage for the Wayland Utani Corporation. It's an interesting factoid considering how frequently the Nostromo's rundown space trucker esque design is lauded as one of its most fascinating aspects, and yet it was initially built with an entirely different purpose in mind. Number 7. The self destruct panel is full of religious and philosophical references. When Ripley initiates the ship's self destruct sequence late in the movie, we get a briefest of glimpses at the Nostromo's unique control panel, which contains a number of esoteric references to religious and philosophical concepts. According to Simon Deering, a member of the Alien production team, Ridley Scott told him to make the control panel buttons complicated and interesting because they won't be on screen for more than a second or two. And so Deering decided to incorporate some phrases from Russian philosopher and occultist Helena Blavatsky's 1888 book The Secret Doctrine, with words such as trip, agaric fly, abhort, leb, drift, Pranic Lift 777, Bell, Linka, Yoni, Shakti Excess, Hum, and Padme. The book itself is concerned with trying to reconcile ancient Eastern philosophy with the more grounded logic of modern science, which given the Alien series' own penchant for spiritual symbolism certainly feels like a fitting touchstone. Number 6. Mother had a 2.1 terabyte AI mainframe. The Nostromo was of course controlled by the mainframe computer Mother. 
Mother was in charge of maintaining the ship's day-to-day -day operations, such as also piloting it when the crew were in hypersleep and more nefariously collaborating with Android Ash to help ensure the safe transport of the Xenomorph. Official documentation states that Mother's mainframe touts a whopping 2.1 terabytes of RAM, which given that around 16 gigabyte of RAM is recommended for your average gaming computer today, represents a memory input more than 130 times the current standard. Considering that sci-fi is historically poor at tracking real-life technological progress, I mean, never forget Blade Runner's flying cars in 2019, it's comparatively realistic that, 100 years from now, a ship's computer would have just over 2 terabytes of RAM. And even if Ridley Scott turns out to have underestimated RAM's progression in the decades to come, there's always the excuse that the Nostromo is a junky space truck that never would have been outfitted with truly state-of-the-art computing tech anyway. Number 5. Its name is an homage to Joseph Conrad's 1904 novel. Ridley Scott has made it abundantly clear throughout his career that he is a huge fan of author Joseph Conrad. For starters, his 1977 directorial debut The Duelists was adapted from Conrad's short story The Duel, and he also named the Nostromo after Conrad's own 1904 novel of the same name. This wasn't always the case though. In earlier scripts, the ship was named The Snark, and also The Leviathan before Scott settled elsewhere. However, these names were later used in the crew manifest, with Dallas being noted to have served on both the USCSS Snark and the UAS Leviathan before captaining the Nostromo. Yet the franchise as a whole contains numerous other nods to Conrad. The Marine Zizizizizz transport ship in Aliens, the Sulaco, is named after a town in Conrad's Nostromo, while Alien 3's ship, the USCSS Patnam, was named after a vessel in his novel Lord Jim. Number 4. The Mother Room was inspired by cathedrals. One of the ship's most distinctive areas is the Mother Room, a unique interface room where only senior members of the ship are granted access. With its all-encompassing array of lights and angular designs, it's quite unlike any other part of the ship, and this was entirely intentional, with the design reportedly supposed to resemble that of a cathedral. In particular, the lights were said to mimic the mass of candles that you'd find in a church, lending a certain sanctified nature to the room and its mischievous AI occupier. Again, Scott certainly hasn't shied away from presenting religious imagery throughout the Alien series, and it pretty much all began with Mother's Interface Room. Number 3. It tugs a mile-long ore refinery It's common for fans to forget that the Nostromo isn't in fact the entirety of the vessel we see at the start of the movie, and that it's actually a smaller ship that's hauling a considerably larger, mile-long refinery. Well, 1.19 miles long to be precise. An opening title card explains that the refinery contains 20 million tons of mineral ore which is being processed on a return trip to Earth. Yet despite the refinery being so much larger than the Nostromo itself, Scott never actually takes us inside it during the film, nor is it ever given an official name. Scott nevertheless oversaw the design himself, and so it was typically inspired by his penchant for quasi-religious symbology. I didn't want a conventional shape, so I drew a sketch and handed it to the model makers. They refined it, as it were, and built the model. I originally drew it upside down, with the vague idea that it would resemble an inverted cathedral. The refinery's distinctive spires were also supposed to be considerably taller, but Scott ultimately removed the upper portions himself shortly before shooting started, allegedly using a hammer and chisel to do so. Number 2. It was originally yellow as much as the Nostromo's washed-out grey colour scheme absolutely accentuates the whole space trucker vibe, the original model for the Nostromo was actually painted bright yellow. Hell, the production crew had even spent a few months filming the model in this quasi-neon shade before Scott returned from principal photography and gave the order to repaint the ship and reshoot all of the model footage. One of the film's special effects technicians, Dennis Lowe, described the crew's mixed feelings at Scott's decision. A lot of people on the crew saw this as more money in the bank, including Overton, time, which was always well paid in those days, but I was a bit depressed having to redo the whole thing over again. This soon passed and I realised that Ridley's vision was much more exciting as he kind of made it up as he went along, which gave the whole shooting experience an organic feel. And number one, it was produced by Lockheed Martin and Rolls-Royce. Amusingly, despite being set 100 years into the future in a world with little in the way of recognisable iconography, the Nostromo's design blueprints confirmed that it was designed by real-life American aerospace company Lockheed Martin, or as they were known in 1979, the Lockheed Corporation. The Nostromo's manufacturing designation is a Lockheed CM-88B Bison, though when the ship was refitted to become a cargo hauler, its original Saturn J3000 engines were replaced by two decidedly more powerful N66 Cyclone thrust engines, which were provided by one of the world's biggest aerospace manufacturers, Rolls-Royce. 
As much as the world of the Alien franchise seems so far divorced from our own, it's still amusing, or disturbing some might say, that these old conglomerates are still flourishing a century from now. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 secrets behind Alien's Nostromo ship you didn't know. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so by going to at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, my personal gaming channel, where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We did down today about the good, trusty ship Nostromo, but you, my friend, have a ship that you are commanding at the moment. And that's your own life. You're in charge of whatever decisions you want to make. But if things are getting too much, don't be that solemn captain going down with the ship. Remember that you can speak to people. Friends, family, professionals in the support industry, these people care about you and want you to do well. And even if there are some difficult conversations to be had, I promise you that by starting them, you'll be able to live a healthier and happier life. And that's all I want for you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.